I want to join all of my colleagues in thanking Susan and the Health Affairs team and Bruce and the SCAN Foundation, not only for a terrific health affairs issue, but for this very special opportunity to announce the launch of the Long-Term Quality Alliance. This alliance is the result of many months of work by a dedicated steering committee chaired by Mark McClellan. The membership organization that results uh, will be guided by a richly diverse uh, board, founding board, many, most of whom are here in this audience today. These are leaders in the delivery of long-term services and supports, uh, representative payers, purchasers, and evaluators of these services, uh, consumer and family caregiver advocates, funders, researchers, policymakers, and others who have joined together with a common mission and a common vision to significantly accelerate quality improvement for the growing population of individuals who wake up every day requiring support for the things that all of us take for granted, bathing, eating, walking, etc. This organization will also focus on that invisible group that Carol referred to, those individuals, the family caregivers that these individuals rely on primarily for help. The Alliance will achieve this mission by fostering the development and use of measures that offered the most promise to improve quality in all contexts in which individuals receive services and supports, and by positioning organizations to implement innovative evidence-based practices designed to achieve meaningful growth and improvement in performance. Now, as Susan mentioned, I had the great fortune to serve as an advisor, the theme advisor for this issue of health affairs an issue that has generated not just an outstanding set of papers, but an excellent foundation for action. The Alliance hopes to be an important vehicle to achieve many of the recommendations outlined in this issue. So first, why focus? Oh, backward. Why focus on the quality of long-term services and support? Well, has been outlined by Stephen and many others. Uh, there is a demand for these services. Approximately 11 million Americans currently receive long-term services and support, and this number is expected to double by 2050. Not so much because we are not doing a better job in prevention of disability, but because we have a silver tsunami along the way. Currently, the measures that we have available to assess the quality of long-term services and support do not adequately capture information that's important to the vast population or consumers of these services for whom progressive loss of function rather than cure is a trajectory. Specifically, we lack measures that help us to understand the experience of the consumers and family caregivers and their perception of quality of life. Perceptions about quality of life can be tremendously influenced by the quality of long-term services and support in people's homes, in community settings, and in institutional settings. Services that do not communicate respect for the individual dignity may negatively affect an individual person's quality of life. Additionally, despite a major growth in the home and community-based sector, we have very few measures focused on this context. Most available measures, as you've heard, focus on the quality of services in institutional settings, such as nursing homes. We also have, with this alliance, a great opportunity to impact national health priorities. Among the major opportunities identified by the National Priorities Partnership, a diverse group of organizations convened by the National Quality Forum and representing those who pay for, deliver, and evaluate health care are the need to substantially enhance engagement of the recipients of care and their family caregivers in decision making, to improve care transitions and coordination, to promote earlier access to palliative and end of life care, and to minimize overuse of services. This was the action agenda agreed upon these, by these partners in order to assure high quality, affordable health care. The recipients of long-term services and support are disproportionately high consumers of costly health services. By targeting these priorities for this important subgroup, we expect to make a great contribution to enhancing quality and, increasing and decreasing cost for all Americans. How can we make a difference? We hope to facilitate dialogue and partnerships among all providers of long-term services and support, as well as between providers in the long-term and acute care sectors. And we want to break down the silos in which quality initiatives traditionally occur. We plan to help consumers, family caregivers, partner with uh, government provider agencies and others to set goals for quality. A unique feature of this alliance relative to other alliances will be the efforts that we will make not just to 
improve the measurement of care, but to better link practices available to improve performance in these measures. Mm -hmm. And we hope to collaborate with other quality groups on common priorities. We want to complement and leverage and advance a number of the initiatives that you've heard about today, both public and private, targeting this population. And in the long run, we, real we realize that organizations that provide long-term services and support must have adequate quality and financial incentives to continue to improve quality. So we will lose, use what we learn from pilot efforts and demos to assist policymakers in designing effective uh, incentives. What are our short-term priorities? Clearly, advancing quality indicators that are important to consumers and family caregivers is a top priority. We need measures that are respectful of and responsive to these individuals' needs, preferences, and values. You've heard from Carol and others that measuring and improving care transitions is exceedingly important. Among the population of people with serious disabilities, transitions in health and therefore health care are the norm. Notably, episodes of acute care uh, resulting in frequent hospitalizations are very common. And we have much of our data on this from the nursing home population. But at any six month period, one in six nursing home residents are in the hospital. 40% of them are accessing care during the 30 days prior to death. Within the broader population of those receiving long-term services and support living in the community, 40% will be hospitalized each year. These hospitalizations are disruptive, they're fraught with complications, and they frequently are associated with poor outcomes, accelerating functional and cognitive decline, medical errors, and avoidable hospitalizations. Individuals who are receiving long-term services and supports are especially vulnerable to the failures in our current system. Lack of transfer of information, poor communication between family members, providers, and others, inadequate preparation of staff in both the acute and long-term sectors to address the comprehensive needs of these people, et cetera. So we have lots of opportunities here. High rates of avoidable hospitalizations, though, are major outcomes as a result of these gaps in care. Available data suggests that between 25 and 40 percent of hospitalizations of just elderly long-term care recipients are avoidable. So decreasing health care cost is a major uh, goal of the Alliance. In addition to the tremendous human burden associated with frequent use of acute care hospitalizations, these hospitalizations have been associated with rapidly escalating cost. The estimated savings just hospital costs alone for Medicare um, for nursing home residents range from 1.1 to 1.4 billion dollars. Our strategies therefore are as follows in the short term to set very meaningful goals for achievement of person and family centered care, to improve care transitions, to work toward preventing avoidable hospitalizations and we expect to focus on these goals over the next two years, to identify and disseminate effective practices to improve performance and to help create the incentives to reward performance. In summary, improving care transitions, reducing avoidable hospitalizations, and decreasing health care costs for this group are essential if we're to substantially contribute to addressing national health priorities. These short-term priorities have the additional benefit of placing a spotlight on a growing population of people who need much more attention locally, nationally, excuse me, and no, local national um, reform efforts um, these individuals also deserve long-term services and support that are aligned to meet their definition of quality. We have a huge opportunity to make a major difference in the lives of millions of Americans, and we plan to capitalize on the ideas generated in these great papers today by many of the thought leaders presenting here and others sitting in the audience, as well as others, to make the most of this moment.